So today we're gonna to be talking about a short-term scalping strategy using the three exponential moving averages and a five minute time frame on our charts. Now, more importantly, I'm gonna share with you exactly how you can set up your charting solution, apply these indicators, and of course, the proper settings that you need to adjust in order to use the system properly. And more importantly, I'm gonna to explain to you how to find your entry points and calculate your stop loss and take profit levels. And this way, by following this strategy, you'll be able to capitalize at least 10 pips profit per trade. And this is an easy strategy that anybody can follow, whether you have some experience or if you're a beginner. So let's go in, let's get started. All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name is Paul, thank you for tuning in. Really excited to do this update with you guys because this is a popular strategy that we haven't really talked about in quite some time. And you know, the last time when we talked about it here on our channel, we received a lot of positive feedback from you all. And more importantly, we received a lot of positive feedback from people who were making great profits from this basic strategy that we're gonna be sharing with you for today. But I also felt that it was important to do this new update because I also wanna clarify some important questions that people had asked from before. And this is mainly gonna revolve around not only how to use this strategy to your advantage, but also how to properly calculate uh, stop loss and take profit levels so that way you can at least capitalize uh, 10 pips profit per trade. Okay, guys. And remember, guys, this is very easy to use. So even if you are a beginner, don't worry, this is something that you'll be able to master. And I do encourage you that if this is the first time that you are using this strategy, always practice with a demo account. Very important. It doesn't matter what strategy you're focusing on when you're trying something new for the first time always practice with a demo account. And that way, if you're using a demo account and you make mistakes, you don't lose anything, okay guys? So you learn from those mistakes, so always practice with a demo, okay? Now, if you are new to the channel, be sure that you subscribe and turn on notifications because we love posting new content every single day, guys. You know, whether it be new strategy updates or just information in terms of the Forex trading in general. That way, when we go live with these new updates, you don't miss out. And we like to keep things as simple as possible so that way beginner traders can gain some value from the information that we provide as well, okay? And for those of you who are new to trading as well, you know, if you're new to Forex, if you really wanna make something out of this, or even if you're struggling in Forex and you're not making the best results that you hoped for, I highly encourage you guys to join our trading group. This is an amazing group that allows you to learn how to make money, learn how to trade, but you also get to make money at the same time. You'll have access to live trading sessions, educational materials. You'll get trade alerts sent to your phone so that way you can just copy trades and you know, paste them into your broker to collect profits from there. It's a very powerful a very powerful trading group, guys, one that I'm very proud to be a part of and we love spreading the word so that way new traders who have never traded before can you know come and join and learn how to trade with us and become some of the most profitable traders we have ever seen, all right? So all that information will be down below in the video description if that is something of interest for you, okay? But moving forward, let's get started with the strategy and let's share with you how to set everything up, okay? So for this example, guys, um, we are looking at the New Zealand dollar, US dollar, okay? And personally, I like to use tradingview.com. This is the charting solution that we're on. And I'll leave the link to the TradingView website down below if you don't use it already. And that way you can follow along in my steps as we go along in this video, okay? And what we wanna do is set our time frame to five minutes. Remember, these are short-term trades. These aren't trades that are gonna last or run, you know, all day or a couple of days or anything like that. These are trades that you're gonna be able to capitalize profits in within the same day, okay? Now, we also wanna make sure that we're using three exponential moving averages as our indicators. Now, in order to find that, all you have to do is click this little icon here, all right? Now, you can type in uh, moving averages and you'll see it right there where it says moving average exponential. Again, we wanna be focusing on exponential moving averages. Don't select weighted, don't select just the basic one or cross or anything like that, because if you do, you alter the strategy and then you could make mistakes. So again, exponential moving averages. Now, we wanna be using three of them, so we're gonna click it three times. So when you click it three times, you're gonna have them you know, charted on your chart and you're gonna see them right here on the top left-hand corner. Now, what you wanna do once you apply your exponential moving average averages is you want to adjust the settings. The default settings for exponential moving averages is set to nine, I believe. So what you want to do is click this little gear box, all right? And you're going to go to inputs and you're going to change this number where it says length, leave everything else the same, but we're going to change the length number to the first one. It's going to be 21. All right. So you'll click okay. 
Then you're gonna go to the second exponential moving average. We're gonna change it to 13. Again, leave everything else the same. We're just changing the value of the length, all right? So 13 is the second one. And the last one, I think we just leave it alone. That one's set to nine. That's the default setting. Now, also make sure that your exponential moving averages are set to different colors so that way you can easily distinguish them. Different colors just make things easier for you to identify where they are. Okay, guys. Now, the rule and the steps to follow this strategy are quite simple. But one thing I do want to clarify, guys, is that it's important that you understand a couple of basics of trading when you're implementing this strategy, not just this strategy, but other strategies that you might be using. One of them, of course, is trend identification. If you don't know how to identify trends, we actually created a basic intro video here on our channel, and I'll leave the link down below for your convenience if you want to, okay? Very important that you're able to identify trends, okay? Now, the other thing that you should be able to understand or get a grasp of is support and resistance, all right? Support and resistance areas are very important when it comes to using almost any strategy. And we actually talked about it in our last update, which was posted over a month ago in this video. So if you don't know how to work that guys, watch that video. So that way you can use this or any other strategy to the fullest extent to your advantage, okay? Now, we have our moving averages set up. Again, we're in the five minute time frame. We're looking at the New Zealand dollar, US dollar. Keep in mind guys that when you're using these types of strategies, make sure that you focus on major currency pairs. Don't focus on uh, you know exotic pairs like the India Ruple or the Mexican Peso or anything like that. You wanna focus on major pairs that are traded, you know, that are widely traded in the market, okay? If you don't know what are major currency pairs, let me know and I'll leave a list so that way you can, you know, apply them to various currency pairs. So for this one, we're gonna be using the New Zealand dollar, US dollar. Now the rule of this strategy is as follows, all right? We're gonna zoom into an area here so that way you can get a visual. And basically what we wanna look for guys is areas of opportunities to enter these trades. And these areas are areas where the candlesticks, also referred as the market, are not touching the EMAs for a period of time. Now this period of time should be no less than, uh, than 30 minutes. So how do we identify these periods of times? Well, again, we're in a five minute time frame. Each candle represents five minutes. So basically what we're looking for is areas where the market isn't touching the moving averages for at least uh, five or six candles, okay? Any less than that, don't take it. Any more than that, that's okay, all right? So let's say, for example, let's actually remove this line here. And we're gonna use the replay feature for this example so that way you can see how it plays out. And that way, as I'm explaining to you the rules, you'll understand why you know why we have these rules and this criteria that's important to follow, okay? So let's pretend we enter the market, we're looking at the New Zealand dollar, US dollar, and the market is about here, okay? So let's say you come into the market and you see an area such as this, okay? So first off, market is below the moving averages. That means we are in a downtrend, okay? So when you're in a downtrend, you wanna be looking for sell trades, all right? Never go against the trend, guys. I say this all the time in my videos and I'll say it again, the trend is your friend. If you're in a seller's market, if you're in a downtrend, look for sell trades. If you're in a buyer's market where the trend is going up, we look for buy trades, okay? So we wanna look for a period where uh, markets haven't touched the moving averages for some time, all right? And here we can see that clear as day. So this is a good opportunity for us to get ready and see if we can enter a trade in this area, all right? So we're waiting, market is remaining below the moving averages. And right here, guys, you can see, if we just zoom in a little bit, we have contact, all right? So it doesn't matter if the candlesticks have crossed or just touched the moving averages. This is what's referred as our trigger candle. And remember, we only wanna get ready to enter trades if we have a period of at least 30 minutes where the market hasn't touched the exponential moving averages, okay? So this is beautiful, guys. Now we can start getting ready for our trade. But in order to enter that trade, we have to calculate a few things. First off, once we've identified our trigger candle, which is this candle that touched the moving average, what we wanna do is count back five candles, including our trigger candle, okay? One, two, three, four, five, all right? Now, what I like to do at this point is take some horizontal lines, 
uh, not a horizontal ray, hold on. Uh, actually, no, not that one. We want the horizontal line. And what we wanna do is mark the highest and lowest points of our five candlesticks that we just counted, okay? And what we're gonna be doing is counting the bodies not the wicks okay guys so just make that clear we're marking the bodies not the wicks all right so let's grab the horizontal line this is the highest point of the five and this is the lowest point of the bodies of the five candlesticks okay now again we are in a downtrend, all right? We are in a seller's market, so we're looking for sell trades. Now, the rule of this strategy applies as follows. We're not gonna jump in and enter a trade. What we wanna do is enter, is wait for retracement, wait for the market to retrace to the lowest level of these five candlesticks before we enter the trade, all right? Now, this is important, guys, because I know a lot of people have asked me before, and I'll say it again, why are we waiting to enter the lowest point if we're looking for a sell trade. And the reason why this is important is because we are at this point, right? We are currently at this area and we don't know, right, if the market is gonna continue to go up, right? We have no idea. So again, we're looking for a sell trade and if the market does go up, we're entering in a losing trade. That's a bad situation for us, right? So we want to wait for retracement. We want to wait for the market to reach this lower level that we have identified where we counted our five candlesticks. Now, what's really cool about doing this with the horizontal lines, we actually have the values here that are displayed. Uh, the highest point is 64263 and the lowest point is 64242. So what we could be doing here, guys, is actually entering a pending order. We go to our broker, we enter a pending order. So that way, if the market does reach this level, it will activate the trade for us, right? Right, pretty cool. But the reason why we also want to enter a pending order is because if the market decides to continue shooting back up, since we didn't jump ahead and enter the trade and pull that trigger too early, if it never reaches our low point, the trade is never executed and we don't lose money as well. Okay, guys. So again, if you have any questions on that, please let me know. And if you have any questions as we go along in this video, please let me know as well. Drop a comment. And of course, you can also reach me directly at prestigeboundary at gmail.com. So we've already identified our entry point, which is the lower point of these five candlesticks. But how do we calculate our stop loss and take profit levels? Well, what I like to do is use this little tool here that's called the short position. Since we're in a downtrend, we're looking for sell trades. So when you're looking for sell trades, you wanna use the short position. If we're in a buyer's market looking for buy trades, we use the long position, okay? So we're gonna use the short position and we're going to mark it at our targeted level where we want to enter the trade. So that's gonna be about here, okay? Now with this tool, this is how you can calculate your stop loss and take profit levels. Now, personally for me guys, I like to use a one-to-one -one risk to reward ratio. And what I like to do because we are targeting short-term trades is I like to try to capitalize at least 10 pips profit per trade, okay? So how you can do this is simply drag this down for our take profit level. I'm gonna have to sandwich this in a little bit, one second, all right? And I'm gonna drop it to this level, okay? Now, how do we know that this is 10, pro uh, 10 pips profit here for New Zealand dollar, US dollar? Well, you can see that with this number right over here, okay? Now, I'm also gonna do the same for the stop loss. And the reason why I like to do this, guys, is because I wanna give ample room just in case if there are reversals in price. I wanna give it ample room so that way it doesn't reach too short of a stop loss and we lose the trade before it retraces back to our take profit level, okay? So now, with this tool, we we can see our stop loss is around 64347 and our take profit is around 64140. So this would be our pending order. We for this level, it's going to be 64263. That's our entry point pending order, right? With with the stop loss and take profit levels. Now, let's see what happens as the trade goes by. Okay, guys? This is why I love using the replay. So that way you can see how trades can pan out when you use a certain strategy, okay? So let's go a little bit fast. Now you see how the market is retracing back a little bit. It's getting close to that take uh, stop loss level. That's why I like to use the one-to-one -one, uh, risk to reward because I wanna give it a little bit of room so that way if the market does reach this level, you know, if we had too short of a stop loss, we would lose this trade. So we wanna give it some room so that way it can retrace, but then hopefully go back to our stop loss area, all right? 
So watch what happens. Drops back down and boom, look at that. We reached our take profit level right over here, guys. So pretty simple. So uh, any questions, guys, please, again, let me know. So that's an example of a sell trade using this strategy. Now I'm gonna show you an example of a buy trade using this strategy. Because again, guys, when you're trading, you're gonna be doing buy trades or sell trades. So it's important that you understand how they work in both areas, all right? So remember, we wanna be looking for areas where the market hasn't touched the exponential movement averages for a period of time, all right? So in this case, so we have an opportunity here, but you know, in this case, we don't wanna do it here because there's a, lot of there's a lot of contact here, there's a lot of contact here, not enough contact here, but using this first example, using the replay feature again, let's say we enter the market right over here, okay? So we see that there is a nice gap between the market and the exponential movement averages. So that's what we want. But again, we want to wait for contact of our candlesticks to touch or break through the exponential movement averages at a period of no less than 30 minutes. Okay, so that's six candles, at least six candles using this strategy. All right. So what we're doing is waiting for contact. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six. Look at that. So this would be valid because on the sixth candle, it made contact, right? It touched, it crossed through a little bit on one of the exponential movement averages. The next step, of course, is counting back. One, two, three, four, five candlesticks, right? So we're gonna mark the lowest point and the highest point of those five candles. Now, in a buyer's market, we're looking for buy trades because again, we don't wanna go against the trend. But what we wanna do is enter a trade at the highest point of these five candlesticks. So we don't wanna just enter a trade immediately once we have you know, contact with markets and exponential movement averages. We wanna wait for retracement. We wanna wait for the candle to reach this level, okay guys? So what we do is we grab our tool, all right? Now in this case, we're using the long position because we're in a buy trade, right? We're looking for a buy trade. So what we wanna do is mark this area near the highest point. So in this case, let's just stretch this out a little bit here, guys. In this case, our entry point would be 63885, all right? So you go to your broker, enter a pending order for entry level at that point. But for stop loss, again, I like to try to capitalize about 10 pips profit, one-to-one -one risk to reward ratio for this strategy. Uh, so our stop loss would be around 63781. Take profit would be around uh, 63991, okay? So again, when you do a pending order, it won't enter the trade until the market has reached this level, okay guys? Now let's see what happens, all right? Market is still below our desired entry level, so obviously our trade has not been activated yet, all right? Now we have a candle that has reached our entry level, so now our trade has been activated. And let's see what happens. Look at that, guys. Just within a few moments, we reached our take profit level. So we've capitalized 10 profits, 10 pips and profits right there. So I hope this was helpful, guys. You have two examples of buys and sell trades using the strategy, because of course, when it comes to Forex trading, you're only gonna be doing one of two things and either enter in sell trades or buy trades. So it's important that you understand how it works for whatever strategy that you are following. Now, one thing to also remember, guys, is that depending on the time that you are trading, depending on what market you're trading, will determine what currency pairs you should be focusing as well. Granted, like I said, you wanna be focusing on major pairs, but depending on the market that you are trading, whether you're trading in the Tokyo market, the London market, the US market, there are certain pairs that you should be focusing on during those times. Also remember guys to use a demo account when you're practicing any type of new strategy. Remember that this is a short-term scalping trading strategy. So, you know, short-term trading does carry some risk as there's risk always in any type of trading. But when you are dealing with short-term timeframes, there is greater risk in compared to longer term trades. So again, practice with the demo account. And remember guys that if you are struggling in trading, take a look at our trading groups. It is the best. This is the best place that you can learn how to trade, make money at the same time, access live trading sessions, learn from those sessions, and also be able to access various other features, including trade alerts that are sent to your phone. So I'll leave all that information down below, guys. Hope you enjoyed today's update. Have a great day. We'll see you soon.